All right, welcome back. Uh, Professor Joyce, Economics 1001. This is our recitation, and this is Chapter 6. And the main themes here are going to be price floors and price ceilings. And the other major theme here is going to be taxes. We'll pick taxes up again in Chapter 8, but it's very important we get the in an introduction to their impact on the supply and demand curves, and we're going to try to figure out where the burden of the tax is falling. So it's a very useful chapter. It's a great way to ch follow chapters five and four in supply and demand. This is gonna take that basic set of tools and kind of push them a little bit harder. So I think it's a really nice chapter. So let's start. Hopefully you've got downloaded the 10 question quiz as we do every week. And we'll start with problem number one. So let me take a look at it with you, all right? I like this because it's kind of a real world situation and it's not obvious what the answer is. So this makes it interesting and a good question to use in recitation. Here it goes. Which of the following would be the most likely result of a binding price ceiling imposed on the market for rental cars? All right. So the first thing we have to say, a binding price ceiling. So let's go and draw a binding price ceiling. Before you even look at the answers, let's get a sense of what they are asking you for and what we can say about this. All right. So I'm going to draw our classic supply and demand curve. I'm going to draw a demand curve like this. Label it T0. We're going to draw our supply curve. I'll put it in green here. And it has been our habit here. We immediately, is S0 and D0, we know this is equilibrium price and we know this is equilibrium quantity. A great way to start these problems always. Get it down, get your basic equilibrium set up, and then move into the problem. All right, so they're asking us for a binding price ceiling. Remember, price floors and price ceilings. Price ceiling can't go higher than that, it's gotta stop. Price floor, price can't go lower than that, it has a floor. So a price ceiling, if it's binding, this is the important part here, if it's binding, it must be below equilibrium price. And this is the key part of the question that you should always draw out for yourself, right? So this is price ceiling, and it's binding. Again, if I had made the price ceiling up here, above equilibrium, it wouldn't have mattered, right? Because price could go above, it won't go above equilibrium. It'll stop at equilibrium. But now we have a binding price ceiling and consumers love it because they get the price below equilibrium and they're willing to demand QD and suppliers are dismayed because the price is so low and they only want to supply QS. So this is the classic setup of our binding price ceiling and now we've got this situation which consumers at this price, and I'll put this here for PC, for price ceiling, at this price you go down the demand curve, consumers want this much, there's, there's consumer demand, that's a quantity demanded at this price PC, but suppliers cannot make any money at this market, so only very few suppliers supply. We have QS as the quantity supplied, and this obviously is our shortage. This is the excess demand relative to the quantity supplied because, again, the price is below equilibrium and it's binding. The government's forcing this price in the market. So now they say, take the market for rental cars. Let's write it down, just so we know. Now, I would love it, because I rent cars a lot, that if the government goes and imposes a price ceiling below equilibrium for rental cars, it'll be good for me in the short run. I'll get a car relatively cheap, rent a car, wonderful. So what's bad with this? Well, what starts to happen? You're a supplier. What are you going to do? You clearly were supplying this much at equilibrium. The price ceiling, the quantity supply starts to fall back. So let's read the answers and try to figure out what's going to be the consequences of this. One, it says frequent rental programs such as rent nine times, the tenth is free. Is that going to happen in this market? Rent nine times, the tenth is free? Why would any supplier offer you a free rental car or a, or a kind of a discount like that or a bonus? That is out of the question here. They are suffering. They're not going to be offering bonuses here. B, enhance maintenance programs to promote the high quality of cars. Well, now they're getting a lower price than they were before, so investing in quality becomes really difficult and expensive. They're not going to do that when their return to that investment, PC, is so low. So no one's going to invest in the quality of the rental cars. 
C, free gasoline given to people as an incentive to rent a car. There's no way suppliers want to stimulate more demand. They don't need any more demand, right? The quantity demand right here already exceeds the quantity supplied. So they wouldn't do any incentive program to try to get more customers because they have more, this small group of suppliers has more customers than they can handle. Again, the price ceiling has forced a lot of the rental car companies to leave the market in this case. Last one, slow replacement of old rental cars with newer ones. Slower replacement of old rental cars with newer ones. In other words, what if you can't change, you've got an inventory, right? And you're supplying rental cars that are nice and shiny and stuff like that. How do you cut your cost? Well, instead of changing the cars over 10,000 miles, let's say, and putting a new car in, you let the mileage run up to 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 miles on the car before you get a new rental car. In other words, when suppliers can't get the price they need to provide their product, what they do is they start to diminish the product. They start to offer cheaper ways around it, right? By expanding the number of miles they'll use a car relative to before when there was a nice equilibrium price and they could replace old cars every 10, 20,000 miles. When the price ceiling happens, one of the consequences will be that firms will start to cut back on the quality of their car. So the answer to number one is D, and I like it because it forces a number of things. You have to draw the diagram. You have to get a binding price ceiling set there. You have to see that there's a shortage, that the quantity demand that exceeds the quantity supplied. And then you have to walk through and think like a supplier. What would you do if you were getting a price that was really too low, that you couldn't cover your cost effectively? How would you cut your cost? Here's one answer. You would start to slow the, the exchange of inventory. In other words, you would stop replacing the old cars with new ones as quickly. You would try to stretch that out as long as you could. And that may be the only way you could survive until the market or the government lifted this price ceiling because people were complaining that they weren't able to get a rental car. All right, so again, number one's a really nice question. Uh, it's a kind of real world question and very effective. So when we stop there, take a break and we'll come back for question two.